The following program is brought to you by friends and partners of End Time Headlines. So at this time, we want to officially welcome all of our audience today. Again, I'm Ricky Scaprell, the founder of the pastor of the Voice of End Time Headlines. Again, if you're joining us on Rumble or YouTube or the platform, our app, whatever the case may be, again, don't forget to get the free app. And today, you can download that. We'll give you more information on it at the end of this segment. Today, if you're watching this visually, there is a picture of a man holding open a newspaper. I know that's a little bit old school. Most of us probably don't read physical newspapers anymore unless we're a little bit older, older generation. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, but we probably get all of our news either digitally on our tablets or phones or we watch. Uh, actually, there was a new poll that said that a lot of people don't even watch news on cable television anymore. They just get it on. Uh, they get on social media outlets or they get it on their phone or whatever the case may be. But I remember and the reason why I got this up there, I remember many years ago. Uh, when I cut my teeth on Bible prophecy, when I first got saved, uh, going on 23 years ago, I cut my teeth on what I call the generals of Bible prophecy. And these individuals were the Jack Van Impey's, the Grant Jeffries, the Hal Lindsey's. In fact, one of the one of the first books I ever got on Bible prophecy was written by Hal Lindsey, and this guy's still going. Grant Jeffries has gone on to be with the Lord. Jack Van Impey's gone on to be with the Lord. David Wilkerson's gone on to be with the Lord. Uh, many of the uh, many of the what we deem to be the generals of the of the of Bible prophecy, many of them have finished their race and they've gone on to be with the Lord. But how Lindsay's still around, and there's there's a small remnant group of individuals of that age group that are still going today. But one of the first books I ever got on Bible prophecy was The Late Great Planet Earth, written by Hal Lindsey. I remember I got this book. It was recommended to me. I, I, I think I began to open that up on a, on a Friday morning, and I did not put this book down until I completely read it from, from front to back. I was so intrigued by this, what was written in this. And many of the things that Brother Lindsey wrote about we, we have seen them come to pass. And I mean, what, he wrote that book, what, in the 1980s? Uh, and that book, for the last, you know, 30 years, uh, things have, you know, come to pass. So, uh, you know, I have great respect for those generals of Bible prophecy. But one of the things that many of them said, many of them said, and this is why we put this up on the screen. One of the things that many of them said, they said the day would come. When you would be able to open a newspaper, and we're going to make this relevant for today, you'd open a newspaper or in today's vernacular, in today's setting, you're, you're going to open your tablet, open your laptop, open your phone, turn on the news, and you're going to be able to take a Bible out and you're going to be able to hold it up and line it up with the headlines that are occurring and that have made front page and they are going to line up with what the prophets foretold in the old and new testaments of the Bible. And I remember uh, one individual, John Paul Jackson, he also went on to be with the Lord. This is one of the things that he did all the time. He would take, uh, the Lord would give him uh, dreams or visions or words where he would see headlines from newspaper headlines or just headlines in general, and he would just speak them out. And many of those things have come to pass. So I kind of, out of the inspiration of that, of that setting, I want to show you today where I'm going to talk about at least four things over the past seven days, four headlines four stories that have circulated that have gone viral on our website and many other prophecy sites that are absolutely prophetic in nature and I, and have made front page. So let's, let's, let's start on this. Let's start with the first one. Here's a headline and this is dealing with the Russian Ukraine thing, but there was a statement that was made in this report 
that was absolutely prophetic. And I believe it went over a lot of people's heads. And the reason why it goes over people's heads is because they get to, they get so politically driven. They get so emotional on whatever side they're taking that they ignore the prophetic implications of these things. And this is happening all over the place. Guys, we've had a, we've had a ban people from our sites on social media, Facebook, wherever, all these social media outlets, because they have attacked us for just simply reporting the news, accusing, of, uh, accusing us of propagating anti this individual or anti that individual or anti this administration or anti that administration. When in reality, we are just giving you news and headlines from a prophetic perspective. So let's get after, let me read this. This is from the Daily Mail. Furious Putin prepares to use, quote, father of all bombs as brave Ukrainians hold up advanced. Russia, which has launched military action against Ukraine, has father of all bombs in its weaponry. Yes, you heard that right. Father of all bombs is the world's most powerful non-nuclear bomb. Here's all that you need to know about FOAB. What is father of all bombs? The bomb that Russia has is a thermobaric bomb. It comes by many names. An arsenal bomb, a vacuum bomb, a fuel air explosive. It is a super powerful non-nuclear bomb that has a blast equivalent to more than 44 tons of TNT. Father of all bombs can cause damage in a radius of 300 meters. The destructive weapon is dropped from a jet and detonates mid-air. It pulls oxygen out of the air and produces a similar effect to a small nuclear weapon. Fuel air bombs are more complicated than they may sound. They carry a different fuel which quickly turns into an arsenal that seeps into buildings and low places such as cellars, bunkers and caves. Afterwards, a large explosive goes off shortly which carries metal grains. But it's not the weapon's most devastating effect. It's the supersonic shock wave that's the deadliest, which results in a vacuum. Simply put, the so-called vacuum bomb is capable of vaporizing human bodies, crushing internal organs and reducing cities to rubble. Nothing can protect from it. Not a tank, not body armor. The destruction is definite. Who developed these bombs? Both the United States and the Soviet Union developed thermobaric weapons in 1960s. In September 2007, the largest thermobaric weapon ever made was detonated by Russia and created an explosion equivalent to 40 tons. Russia's father of all bombs is said to be four times more powerful than the United States' mother of all bombs. The US version was first tested in 2003 in Florida and it reportedly costs over $16 million each. In 2017, the US dropped one which weighed 21,600 pounds on the Taliban in Afghanistan. It left a crater more than 300 meters wide after it exploded six feet above the ground. China has also developed a bomb to counter America's mother of all bombs. In 2019, China tested the Xi'an H6K. According to the Chinese government, Xi'an H6K can destroy any building or military establishment. Use of father of all bombs on Ukraine. The FOAB is Kremlin's weapon of choice. The bomb was allegedly used in Syria in 2016 and it can now be used to demolish the Ukrainian defence establishment and more importantly, break the morale of the country's military and its people. Reports have it that Putin has ordered its use as part of his shock and awe campaign. Now listen to this next line. The West warns Russia could use terror weapon that, quote, vaporizes bodies alongside a massive amphibious assault as, as invaders run into fierce resistance in Kiev. Now, here's another headline. This is from uh, the dailywire.com. Russia sparks outrage after deploying terrifying weapon system to Ukraine. Quote, a war crime aimed at slaughtering people. And I want to go back. I want to read. I want to pull this away and I'm going to read something to you real quick. Again, this is from dailymail.com. This is a UK affiliate. Russia could use savage super weapons that, and again, I quote, vaporize bodies 
and could and could crush internal organs if their assault of Ukraine becomes bogged down, according to Western officials that gave the chilling warning. Now, that paragraph, many people don't realize this, but I believe is absolutely prophetic. And I'm going to show you why I believe it is. And I believe the prophet foresaw or he saw in the future this type of weapon. And by the way, I got to be careful what I say here, but there is other nations that has this, they have in their possession, this type of weapon that Zechariah describes. Now, Russia claims that they have it. I hope to God we don't see it, but time will tell. But nevertheless, let me show you this in Zechariah 12. The prophet said that there would be a plague and he called it a plague, which the Lord would strike all those who fight against Jerusalem. And by the way, this plague did not, and some scholars believe, now again, I'm not here to debate this. Some scholars believe that the war defined as Psalms chapter 83. Remember this war. Let me, let me pull back and we'll pull back on this here in a second. The war of Psalm 83, I don't have it pulled up here, but it talks about an Islamic confederacy that will arise. And this is not Ezekiel 38, 39. This is a war, this is a war before Ezekiel 38, 39. But there, was, there would be an Islamic confederacy that would rise up and tr- with the attention to destroy Israel. Now, there is many scholars out there that believe that this was actually fulfilled in the war of 1967, the Six-Day War, in which Israel miraculously defeated those, uh, as those nations, those confederacy of nations that came up against Israel, and Israel became victor- and victorious in a profound Six-Day War. Now, I'm not here to... Now, could that be fulfilled? Sure. That could have been the fulfillment of Psalm 83, Only time will tell. Or was that a war before that war? That's again, you got to go back and listen to the prophecy update that we gave last Thursday on our podcast, where I talked about the the this particular war of Gog and Magog, Ezekiel 38, 39. And I talked about there is a it it appears to be there's a series of conflicts, wars skirmishes, whatever you want to call them, that take place and could take place before we get to what many scholars label as World War III, which is the Gog-Magog War, Ezekiel 38-39. But guys, don't miss it. The point is, if, here's what I'm trying to tell you, if this Psalm 83 war was fulfilled in 1967, we know that this plague that Zechariah is going to talk about. Let me pull it back up. I know I didn't finish it. Sorry, my ADD kicked in and went off to something else, but I didn't. It was kind of a rabbit trail, but we were still on the same track here. But let me just read this and then I'll elaborate more. And this shall be the plague which the Lord will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. Listen to this. Their flesh shall dissolve while they're standing on their feet. Now stop. That is not some Ebola strand. That is not some kind of smallpox. There's no plague. If you're thinking, when you think of plague, if you think of a disease out there, there is no disease that exists on the planet that we know of that will dissolve their flesh while they're standing on their feet. Listen, let me read on and their eyes dissolve in their sockets and their tongues dissolve in their mouths. That is, guys, that is not describing a disease. That, my friend, is describing a weapon, a destructive, evil weapon that I believe we have not seen in our generation. Now, is it atomic in nature? Is it nuclear in nature? Is it chemical warfare? Whatever it is, the bottom line is, guys, 
the prophet Zechariah, don't miss this, said he saw a time in the future. Now, is that going to be Ezekiel 38, 39? We'll see. Is that going to be Armageddon? We'll see. But we know there is coming a time and a day when there will be nations that will arise against Jerusalem with the intent to destroy them and wipe them out. And the prophet said, I'm going to put this in my interpretation, that the prophet saw a weapon that he has never seen before, that he is trying to describe to a generation that would read this, uh, hello, us, He's trying to describe this. I saw something that I can only describe as a plague. And it was so powerful and so destructive that it literally caused the flesh, the eye sockets and the tongue to melt and dissolve before my very eyes off of the skeletal remains of individuals as they stood on their feet. And I'm listen to me, friends. There is nations out there that possess this kind of weapon. And I'm going to go ahead and just say, one of them is probably Israel. Thus, that's why the prophet saw this response when these nations try to take Israel out. Guys, this is nothing conspiracy. We all know that Israel possesses some of the most powerful weapons in the world. They have one of the most powerful uh uh, uh, pilots and weaponry in the world. So this shouldn't come as a surprise to you. But what's profound about this? The profound thing about this is here we have a headline and a report in 2022 descri- describing weapons capable of dissolving flesh. And the prophet Zechariah saw this all the way back then and saw into the future a time when this weapon would be unleashed against the enemies of Israel. That is prophetic, my friends, in nature. But there's more. We got more headlines. Here is yet another headline that is absolutely prophetic. Now, this is a report from multiple outlets. This one's from CNBC, but other, other outlets echoed the same thing. Wheat, soybeans hit nine-year highs as Russia invades Ukraine. Let me read this report, and then I'm going to show you how this is prophetic. The U.S. wheat and corn futures rose by their daily trading limits, while soybeans scaled the highest since 2012 as Russian forces fired missiles at Ukraine and landed troops on, uh, in, on its south coast, ex- exacerbating worries over global supply chain. Wheat rose for a third day, scaling its highest in more than nine years. Listen to what I'm telling you today, because I'm about to show you why this is prophetic in nature. Wheat rose again scaling its highest in more than nine years while corn has climbed to a fresh eight-month peak. Now, this is happening while we're still seeing the fertilizer shortage, corn shortage, wheat shortage, soybean shortage. All these shortages are culminating together. So that all this is happening. Now, later this week, We're going to home in on this specifically, and we're going to give you another update on the food crisis and the famine that is happening, not going to happen, but is happening. Inflation is behind a spike in the cost of food across the United States. That's right. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the average price of all grocery items rose 6.5 percent throughout 2021. Mm. Certain foods rose in price more than others. Chicken breast is more than 45 cents per pound more expensive now than at this time last year. A pound of bacon went from $5.83 to $7.22, and eggs climbed around 50 cents to an average of $1.92 per carton. For more on this, Nancy Roman joins us now. She's the president and CEO of Partnership for a Healthier America. 
So, Nancy, maybe we could start by having you break this down for us about how many Americans are dealing with food insecurity and how much is inflation actually making that worse? Sure. Well, sadly, about 35 million Americans were food insecure before we headed into the pandemic, and that's now gone up to 42 million. And the data lags a little bit, so it's probably higher than that, you know, when you take into consideration inflation and, and the impact that it's having. And so, Nancy, healthier foods such as fish, eggs, even fruits and vegetables are rising in cost more quickly than foods like cereal, sweets, and bakery products, you know, all those carbs, those fillers, I call them. How could this impact the health of lower Americans who are already struggling to afford healthier options at the grocery store? Yeah, well, inflation always hits, you know, those with least hardest, of course, because they spend disproportionate amounts of their income on gas and food. And so when gas and food go up, um, you know, it, low income folks are now spending about 12 percent of all their disposable income on food up from 10 percent. Um, so it is an issue. Um, I will say that I think there's an opportunity to really even look at the problem through a bigger lens because, you know, we've had this two tier food system for a long time where some of us have plenty of food and, you know, 10 kinds of chopped salads and great foods being delivered to our door by drone. And another 40% of the country just doesn't even have access to good food. They may not even be experiencing some of the things you showed chicken and and milk and eggs going up in a grocery store because they don't have a grocery store. I'm kind of hoping that now that inflation's kind of make us, made us all realize, wow, you know, food costs a lot and it's important, that we really begin to question if we want to accept this two-tiered food system that we're living in. So, so often when we start talking about issues of food security, uh, it's a matter of balance. So let me just ask you, how can people stay healthy and not break the bank while trying to afford this rising cost of food you're talking about. You know, well, there is an opportunity here, and you have to be careful how you say it. But you know, one of the foods that has become trendy among millennials, and I think it used to be considered a poor man's food when my grandparents were eating it every single day. But beans, legumes, every kind of beans, chickpeas, black beans, cannellini beans are really a great source of plant-based protein. Um, that you know can be the staple piece of a really, really, really healthy diet. Um, we see restaurants are adding that onto menus, and 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 so are carry out. And there's an opportunity for all of us to put that back into the diet because they are relatively inexpensive, you know, relative to meat. They also have super low carbon footprints. So I do think we'll be hearing a lot more about plant-based protein being a bigger part of the overall makeup of food across all income demographics. But how's this prophetic, Brother Ricky? Well, let me show you. John the Revelator saw into the tribulation. Now, I, I'm going to... Now, this scripture's up here, and I'm just going to forewarn you for all the KJV only people. Don't get mad at me. The only reason why I use, uh, listen, when I use another translation, I make sure that it does no harm to the original translation. And this translation does not harm the original by any means. So I want to read to you Revelation chapter 6, verses 5 and 6 from the New Living Translation. Because the way it words this, it makes it simple for people to understand. Guys, there's pe look, what good is it to warn people of prophecy if we give them information that they can't comprehend, they can't digest, and they can't understand it? So I want to make this, that my goal and my mission is to inform, to equip, and to warn. So I give you the information so that you can be informed and that you can be equipped and that you can share it with your family, with your friends, with your coworkers and others that can be informed and equipped as well. So they're not ignorant of the days in which we are in. Here it is, Revelation 6, 5 and 6. When the lamb broke the third seal, that's Jesus is the lamb. I heard the third living being say, quote, come, John speaking. I looked 
I looked up and saw a black horse and its rider. This is one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And this rider was holding a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice from among the four living beings say, quote, a loaf of wheat bread. Hello, wheat, a loaf of wheat bread or three loaves of barley will cost a day's pay. Some translations say a day's wages. And don't waste the olive oil and the wine. So again, let me go back. What is it? What has reached a nine-year high? Wheat, soybeans, corn, fertilizer shortage. And when you have a fertilizer shortage and a corn shortage, guys, again, this is all crippling the, the, the food uh, stability of the nations of the world, not just our nation. But I'm showing you, prophetically speaking, this is all going right in order and right as planned prophetically. The, uh, the timeline is thrusting and moving forward. Let me give you, now I'm going to give you another headline. This one was stunning to me. This is from the Jerusalem Post. Look at this headline for people that know Bible prophecy. I'm telling you, this sense chills up your back. Makes your hair stand up. Look at this headline. Could Israel become Europe's, quote, gas supplier? I'm going to read this little excerpt right here on your screen. With Europe realizing its complete dependency on Russia's gas, and it played with the right cards, the crisis in Ukraine can be an opportunity for Israel's gas exportation to Europe. Wow. Let me, I'm going to read a little bit of this, and then we're going to come back to this. Israel could make moves to position itself as a central gas exporter in the Mideast. As tensions surrounding the war in Ukraine have led to discussion about alternatives to, to Russia's gas exports, while it is already supplying gas to Jordan and Egypt, if the right steps are taken, Israel has the potential to become a, quote, natural gas source for all of Europe as well. Quote, Europe is completely hysterical that it sits in the hands of Putin, said Dr. Alexander Coleman from the Faculty of Management at Tel Aviv University. Quote, the idea that Putin is sitting with his hand on the faucet and can, at quote, will open or close gas supply to Europe. This is a terrible scenario for them, end quote. Quote, it is, however, a brilliant opportunity for Israel. In its current position, Europe would do much to find alternative sources to its fuel supply needs. Quote, one of the ways is an alternative pipeline, <clears throat> excuse me, that will bring gas or perhaps electricity from Egypt, Israel, and perhaps Saudi Arabia to Europe through Cyprus. He is referring to the, quote, East Med Pipeline. It's a planned project that will directly connect the natural energy resources in the Eastern Mediterranean Sea to greater Europe. This was drawn up in 2013. The pipeline was to be operational by 2025. That's three years from now, following Israel's approval of the plan last year in 2020, or in, in two years ago in 2020. Though that progress was halted when the Biden administration withdrew the U.S. support of the project last month, this change in policy was staunchly criticized by U.S. representatives who said that it deepened Europe's energy dependence, dependence on Russia's gas ex, exports. Quote, Biden's announcements last May to suspend sanctions on the Russian pipeline and his continued fight against sanctions shows clear preference towards Russia over our allies. Did you hear that? So this is Israel speaking. In other words, have you noticed where Russia now is turning its, they are taking a stand against Israel. We showed you an article, what, last Thursday when we talked about the Ezekiel 3839 prophetic war. I showed you an article where Russia 
and its leadership was rebuking Israel for its quote unquote occupation of the Golan Heights and said it was illegal. And again, they looked down on it. And I'm telling you, prophetically speaking, there's coming, but I'm going to, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Let me clarify what, why this is prophetic. In fact, let's just go there now. Why is this headline prophetic? When we, when we get to Ezekiel 38, guys, and I put up Ezekiel 3 and 4, the Lord says, Behold, I'm against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tabal. Now, again, I, you got to go back and listen to the, there, it's over, it's an hour long segment last Thursday. I believe it will be very informative to you. I go into detail how. Gog is a prince chief spirit over these regions. Turkey's involved. Iran, Iran's involved. Armenia, Germany, and southern Soviet states are involved. All these, there's seven nations that will form a coalition in the latter days, and they will come down to attack Israel for it's, and I quote, their spoils. Now, let me go back to the scripture. I will turn you around and put hooks, plural tense. Everybody says hook, it's wrong. It's not a hook, guys. It's hooks, plural tense. Because for years and years and years, Bible prophecy teachers, scholars, theologians, many of them have said hook. And they've used singular hook and singular jaw, but it's, look at the scriptures. It's hooks, plural tense, and jaws, plural tense. And I believe the written, this is where they're missing it. And they always say oil, oil, oil. And I've always said the Arab nations all have oil. Why would they need oil? But now we're seeing where, with this, let me pull this back up. Now we're seeing the crisis unfold, which gives more credence of why, hello, that these nations could invade Israel for their oil supply. Think about it. If they're being cut off from Europe and from all these other sources, they have to have oil. Oh, come on. But remember, there's hooks, plural tense. Let me go back to it again. Hooks, hooks in the jaws. So, again, this is starting to become more and more clear. It's not just oil. It's not just energy. But listen, if famine's coming and drought's coming and food shortages are coming, that's where your plural tense comes from. So they're going to need oil. They're going to need fuel. They're going to need food. They're going to need water. So it's multiple hooks in the jaws. And the reason why it's plural tense jaws, because it's not just a hook in Russia's jaw. It's not just a hook in Turkey's jaw, but it's a hook in Turkey's jaws and Russia's jaws and Iran's jaws and, uh, and the, the Armenian and Germany and all these other nations that are forming this coalition with them. So this is absolutely prophetic and it gives more validity to the scriptures this is powerful guys i'm going to give you another one let me show you another scripture i'm going to show you ezekiel 47 but look this is a headline from breaking israel news 365 this is a headline quote river prophesied by ezekiel Man, this guy's batting, isn't he? He's, we're seeing his prophecies of Ezekiel 38 coming to pass. And now we see this from Ezekiel 47. Listen to this. River prophesied by Ezekiel, quote, accidentally discovered in Jerusalem. I want to read some of this. Recently, let me pull this away here. Recently, excavations were undertaken in the basement level of the Fruman building of King George Street in the heart of Jerusalem. Workers were surprised and stunned to find a large volume of water flowing into the ex ex excavation. Sorry, they initially assumed the water was the result of a broken water pipe, but soon later discovered that the source was a previously unknown 
natural source. The three-story building was originally intended to be a six-story office building, but construction was halted in the 1947 War of Independence. By the way, that was prophesied as well, and it came to pass when Israel was rebirthed as a nation in 1947-48. It is and it and was chosen to house the Knessets of Israel, and after completion, housed the first to fifth Knessets from 1955 until 1966. The construction was intended to create a Knesset museum. The construction workers also discovered an old water pump, indicating that at one point, listen to me, the water source had been known and utilized. No records have been discovered in the Knesset archives indicating knowledge of this water source. It is described as a, quote, massive amount of water that requires the installation of a pumping system to prevent the foundations of the building from being undermined and the building itself from being flooded. There is, quote, still no decision on how to deal with the hidden spring and if after the completion of the works, it will be possible to even leave the water source open to the public or the water will be drained into the municipal water system. One rabbi, Yosef Berger, cited the prophecies of Ezekiel chapter 47, 1 through 8, describing water flowing from Jerusalem in the end of days. So I'm going to read this prophecy to you. This is what, according to this rabbi, this was the fulfillment of, again, this is Ezekiel, so you can see where I'm at, because there's no way I could have put all this scripture, but I'm going to read this. This is Ezekiel 47, 1 through 8, if you want to follow along with me. Quote, he led me back to the, or let me, I'm going to give a different translation, because he reads it from a translation that's a little bit harder to read. So I'm going to read this from the New King James. Quote, and then he brought me back to the door of the temple, and there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple towards the east, and, and the front of the temple faced east. The water was flowing from under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He brought me out by the way of the north gate and led me around on the outside to the outer gateway that faces east, and there was water running out on the right side. And when the man went out to the east with the line in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits and he brought me through the waters. The water came up to my ankles. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters. The water came up to my knees. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through and the water came up to my waist. Again, he measured 1,000, and it was a river that I could not cross, for the water was too deep. Water in which one must swim, a river that could not be crossed. He said to me, son of man, have you seen this? And then he brought me and returned me to the bank of the river. When I returned there, along the bank of the river were very many trees on one side and the other. And then he said to me, this water flows towards the eastern region, goes down into the valley and enters the sea. When it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. And it shall be that every living thing that moves, whether the rivers go, will live. There will be a very great multitude of fish because these waters go there and they will be healed and everything will, will live wherever the river goes. Now, again, I'm just telling you guys, that these headlines that are making front page, that are trending, that are going viral, are the fulfillment of things that we're seeing, that we're experiencing in our lifetime. Now, look at this. This was an actual headline from the Los Angeles Times. Now, you know, we are in prophetic end times when even mainstream media is beginning to seek and ask questions. Listen to this. First pandemic, then recession, and now Russia invades Ukraine. Anything else, world? Or in other words, what's next? Again, this is a headline from the Los Angeles Times. 
sh- showing us that the world is now searching for answers. What is going on? Guys, this is the general consensus of people that don't know the Lord. This is where you and I come into play as watchmen, as sons of Issachar that know the times and seasons. Listen, one thing about us is we're not ignorant of the scriptures. We're not ignorant of the times and seasons in which we're in. Listen to me, guys. All across pulpits this past Sunday morning, I'm not saying everywhere, but I will say the majority in the United States and even outside the United States, pastors get, getting up behind pulpits. While all this is going on, while the world is looking for answers, what's going on? Birds dropping out of the sky dead. The pandemic's going on. Plagues are happening. Pestilence are happening. Earthquakes are happening. Disasters are happening. Wars breaking out. They're saying, what's going on? What's next? What does this mean? And what are they getting for answers? They're getting five steps on how to be successful. Ten steps on how to gain a greater influence on social media. Three steps on how to become a more influential Christian. Or how to be popular and how to be your best life and how to gain notoriety, and all these things that are frivolous and that are useless. The the prophet said in the New Testament, Peter said in the New Testament, he talks about evil days. He talks about being prepared. He talks about this world is passing away and the lust thereof. And he said, how much more of a manner of people should we ought be? He talks about pulling people out of fire so that their souls can be saved. Guys, this is where you and I are up to bat. This is where all of us are up to bat. And this is where our responsibility, the responsibility comes on our shoulders. So that when your co-workers are saying, and they know you're a Christian, and by the way, if you're an undercover Christian, I question whether or not you're even a Christian. If people don't, if listen, if people at your job and people in your family and people in your neighborhood don't know you're a Christian, are you really? Because my Bible says that we're to let our light so shine among men that they may see our works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. My Bible says that we are to be a, a, a lamp that's set upon a stand. We're a city set upon a hill. We're not to hide our light under a bushel. We're to be salt and we're to be light. But if we lose our savor and we lose our flame and we lose our light, the Bible says that we're good for nothing but to be thrown out into the streets and be trampled on by men. So if you ever wanted an opportunity, well, Brother Ricky, I don't know how to get to them about Jesus. I don't know how to talk to them about Jesus. I, I want to witness to them. I want to be, uh, I want to be a witness, but um, I just don't, I don't know how to break the ice. Here is your opportunity. Hey, man. Hey, you're talking to this guy. You're talking to this girl. You're talking to your coworker. You're talking to your family. Get them on the phone. Say, hey, are you watching the news? Yeah, it's crazy. Can you believe what's going on? This gives you an opportunity. Yeah, it is. But this is only the beginning of sorrows. Give them this scripture right here. Show them this. Matthew 24, 6 and 8. Tell them this. Say, you see all this stuff going on with the wars, with the war with Ukraine, with Russia, and now all these other nations are getting pulled into it. You see all this crazy stuff with the weather and with the, the food shortages and the pandemic and the plague and the pestilence. You see all this stuff. Jesus foretold this and said that this would be a major, these would be major signs of the coming of the Lord and the end of days and the end of the age. And they'll say, wow. And then you could give them the scripture, Matthew 24, 6 and 8. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled. Tell them, look, don't, you, don't, you don't have to freak out. You don't have to get anxious. You don't have to lose sleep. And, and you say, and they'll say, 
Well, how can I not? Look what's happening. Let me read on, and then I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you the solution for them so they can have the peace that you have. Listen to what he said. See that you're not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation. Kingdom will rise against kingdom, and there will be famines, and there will be pestilence, and there will be earthquakes in various places, and all these are the beginning of sorrows. So you need to look them dead in the eyes and say, we're living in perilous times. We're living in biblical times. And you're freaking out and you're wondering what's going on. What's going to happen? What do I do? How do I prepare? You got to look them in the eyes and say above you. Yes, you can store up food. Yes, you can store up water. Yes, you can have a uh, you can have a plan. You can have a blueprint. You can have all these things laid out of what you can do, practically speaking. But you need to tell them above all that. Do you know Jesus? Do you have a personal relationship with the Messiah, with the son of God, the son of David? the Son of Man, Jesus Christ. And if they say no, then you lead them to the Lord right there. At, their jo- at, 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 the, at the break area, at the cafeteria, in the lunchroom, in the parking lot, after work, on the telephone call, at their house, at their office, give them an opportunity lead them to the Lord. Why? So then they can have peace like you and I have that surpasses all understanding. And we are comforted to know that all these things have to come to pass. But the end is not yet. And the birth pangs will increase until God, come on, punches the clock. Until he punches the clock, until he gives the okay, until that trumpet sounds and that shout happens over the banister of heaven, we have got to continue to occupy until he comes. So listen, here's how we're going to close today's broadcast. If you're watching this, maybe somebody invited you and you're like, oh my gosh, this is one of those religious nuts. This is one of those religious shows. I don't want to hear this. Why did you send me this stuff? I don't want to hear this. Listen, my friend, you need to hear what I'm telling you today. This is how the Holy Spirit speaks. And it's not by accident that you're listening to this. And you need that peace that surpasses all understanding. And you say, well, how do I get it? It, Listen, it is so simple. The Bible says, if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ was more than a prophet, that he was not just a man, but that he was the son of God and he came to earth to reconcile us, humanity, back to him. He who knew no sin became sin that we may have the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. He himself gave himself as a ransom for many. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross for you and for me. And all he's asking us to do, my friend, is repent of our sins, repent of doing things our way and looking to ourselves, looking to our government, looking to our economy, looking for nations, leaders, looking for everything else for the answer. When the answer is found in the word of God, and it has been for thousands of years, but you have to make that step. So right where you're at, right where you're watching this today, if you're listening, if you're watching, wherever you're at, I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray the Holy Spirit have his way in this broadcast. Lord, that you would convict that man or that woman who is watching and listening behind this camera, behind this screen. Lord, if they don't have a relationship with you, I pray that as you move in their heart, that they would begin to confess their sins before you. They would repent of their sins. They would put their trust and their faith in Jesus Christ that they would ask you, Lord, to come into their hearts and live in them through the Holy Spirit and that you would lead them and that you would guide them, 
all the days of their lives. Lord, you said that you would keep that man in perfect peace whose mind has stayed upon thee, according to the book of Isaiah. So, Lord, I thank you today that people is getting peace that surpasses all understanding. People are being born again today. People are coming to the Lord today. People are coming to the kingdom today. Listen, if you're watching this or you're listening to this today and you say, Brother Ricky, I knew the Lord at one time, but circumstances, events, hurts, wounds, life, the cares of life, all these things have caused my heart to grow dull and I am in a backslidden state. I'm not where I should be. I'm not where I used to be. I don't pray like I used to. I don't read the Bible like I used to. I'm not in tune with God like I used to be. Friend, there is an opportunity right now for you to come back to Him. It is the devil makes this far more complicated than it is. All you have to do is acknowledge that you are not where you should be. Come on, repent where you're at and turn and go back to him. Friend, you know what? Here's the reality. If you're backslid, who moved? I can assure you it wasn't God, it was you. So if God didn't move and he's still where he is, then all you got to do is turn around the bible one of the one of the uh translations of the word repent actually means to change the mind to do a 180 so you just turn from where you're at and you go back into the arms of the father look at the prodigal son he had a relationship with the father but then he fell away and the bible says after a process of time he came to his senses repented and he got up and he turned in the direction of the father and ran back to the father. And the Bible says the father was already waiting with his arms wide open to embrace the son who was once lost, but now is found. Oh, who am I talking to today? Come on. You're, you may not be where you should be, but God is waiting for you to be back where you ought to be in Jesus name. Come on, just get back to the father, get back into his arms. Yeah. I'm telling you, I feel the Holy ghost working all the way through me today. There's some people, there's a lot of people today and this is hitting home to you. And we're going to listen. And, so I, and I feel this in my spirit. I feel like there's people watching this today and you've got a lot of lost loved ones, family, friends, even co-workers that don't know the Lord. And you're, listen, just keep praying for them. Keep witnessing to them. Keep sowing the seed. Keep watering the seed through prayer and intercession. And just be patient and wait for God to give the increase. The hardest thing to do, guys, is wait. It, we don't have patience. Listen, I'm speaking to Americans. I get it. I know I'm the worst. Listen. I grew up in the microwave society. We want it now. We got to have it now. It's got to be instantaneous. We live in the microwave, TikTok, instant drive-through fast food society. And we, has the, we have this notion to believe that God operates his kingdom like we do on earth in our timeline. And that's not the case. The Bible says, grow not or do, be not weary. In well doing. For in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. That's a word for somebody right now that is your heart is overwhelmed because you've been praying, you've been believing, you've been sowing seed for people to get saved in your family, in your workplace, in your own household, or whatever, your friends, or whatever the case would be. You just got to keep doing what you're doing, guys. And God will reward you in Jesus' name. Come on, y'all believe that today? Listen, intimeheadlines.org, intimeheadlines.com. Again, want to reiterate the, uh, the urgency. And I do say urgency. Download our app. Why? Because I believe social media giant outlets like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, these outlets, if you're following us on any of those page, on those social media outlets, I don't believe, I believe our days are numbered there just for, a, and I don't have time to elaborate on why, because it would take too long, but you need to go directly to your play store, your Apple store and download our free app, get into your hands, push yes to put a push notifications. And you're going to have all our ministry is going to be right there for your convenience. Subs subscribe to our main website.
And you can do that at endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com. And as always, guys, we want to give you the opportunity. If you're listening today and this ministry has been a continual source of blessing to you on a personal level, on your family's level, whatever, it's just been a great blessing to you. We want you to pray about becoming a partner of our ministry. You can do that two different ways. It's real simple. You can give electronically through the app or through the main website, or you can give by check or money order. And you could do that at End Time Headlines, P.O. Box, 1391, Monroe, Georgia, 30655. And on that note, guys, to everyone watching, everyone listening, you know who you are. All of our partners, all of our givers, all of, all of our supporters to our ministry, again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for your support. It is through you that we're able to continue doing what we're doing. Listen, we recently just had uh, Google contact us because our app is on Apple and Google. Google contacted us and said there had to be changes to our app in order to comply with their whatever it was. Their, and this is stuff's way over my head. That's why I have a technical team that deals with all this stuff behind the scenes. But in order for us to get that fixed, and updated, it cost our ministry over $400. But guess what? It's paid for. Again, you got, this is what the support and uh, the partnership come, it, you, behind the scenes, guys, we're able to update things. We're able to get the app out free. We're able, we have security measures that we put on our website so that we don't come under certain attacks and stuff. We've got uh, a P.O. box. We have to pay for all. So there's expenses to the ministry. And look, we just want you to be blessed because I understand the principle of giving, sowing, and reaping. We, we're not going to tell you to do anything that we don't do. We give to other ministries. We sow into what I, I call, a, we cast our bread upon many waters because there's many ministries that our ministry gets fed through that support our ministry or they support the, the giving to the poor, the widow, the, the, the orphans and etc. And we sow into them. So it's a continual redistribution of the, the money of going and sowing into the kingdom. So we just want you to know that you're partnering with us. We're reaching people around the world, not just America, but look, read the comments from people where they're at Australia, Britain, the Middle East, Europe, all over the place, guys. Africa, we've got people all around the world that will never be able to step foot in a physical church, but they can hear the gospel. They can be informed. They can be equipped of what's going on. So we just want you to know that. And again, we appreciate your partnership to our ministry. So guys, we're going to sign off for today. And we will, we plan on being back on here. Uh, what is Monday? We, we should be either tomorrow or Wednesday, but be looking for it. We will be back soon enough. Uh, but until then, we pray the Lord bless you. May he keep you and may his countenance be upon you. God bless you guys. We'll see you soon. Thank you for listening to the End Time Headlines podcast. We pray that you've been blessed and equipped by today's message. For more information about how you can help partner with our ministry, please visit endtimeheadlines.org.